Now you can scan sketches to the cloud, vectorize them in AutoCAD, and distribute the files around the world. The HP DesignJet EMFP, the world's most collaborative printer. I started building models when I was really young. At five or six years old, I, I was making things up. So I think uh, my inclination was always to try and express myself through building models. Home, you will be home. You will be loved. You will belong with me. Home. My name is Bart Prince, and we're here in my studio in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Well, I was, I was born in Albuquerque and, and grew up both in Albuquerque and in Santa Fe. Here in Albuquerque, everything is kind of the kind of roadrunner cartoon looking kinds of fake adobe <laughs> things, and I always thought that was horrible. I mean, from the time I was a little kid. So I had something, I don't know what, inside me that that sort of rebelled against that and wanted to see the light and see a little bit more creative kind of responses to things. Any design, any building, really starts with an idea. You know, if we could do it in drawings, that's what we did. But there were several clients that sometimes specifically requested a model. And you could take three or four sheets of, of chipboard, we call it, or various types of cardboard, and that could turn into any number of things. It's going to depend on the imagination of the person that's building the model. I want them to be able to see the spaces and, and to see the structure, but I'm not trying to absolutely mimic you know, the, the materials in the, in the building. I work from the inside out, so it, the design grows from the inside of solving the problem, the, you know, the actual spaces they need, and that kind of thing and then it becomes something that's three-dimensional. The house in Rio Rancho, which came to be sometimes referred to as the snake house or the dragon house, grew out of the requirements of the, of the client, as all of my work does. She was interested in privacy and interested in the idea of getting up off the ground where she could have a view and also it allowed the, the land to continue through uninterrupted, you know, with uh, for a lot of animals that were running free out there at the time we built. We didn't, we didn't grade or change the shape of the land at all, but actually let the house hover above it. It always surprises them when you finally show it to them, because even if you've been through the plans and shown them drawings and everything, they, they still are not quite visualizing it kind of in her mind. She saw this as something sort of a, a hovering kind of a structure, like being up in the clouds. Architecture to me is it's like music. It has a, a quality of mystery about it. I had a professor in school that used to think that on, on first seeing any building you ought to immediately know what it was for and how to get in and all this stuff and I always thought that's awfully boring. I'm interested in, in actually discovering what's going to come out of each problem through the design process. 